Welcome to our It's Electra series. In this series, we're going to share with you gear based on and inspired by the Electra distortion circuit. Join us on this journey where we get the most tone out of the least circuit. <laughs> for the MPC guitar. But before we get into that module, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel, clicking on the notification button so that you'll know what we're up to, check out what we're doing, and your engagement with us helps us engage people that send us cartridges and things. Right, cool stuff. Um, and this is the final cartridge, and it's the only one we haven't done yet. So it's the MP7 Ottawa. Uh, our friend Tommy sent this over. He sent a lot of the other cartridges. He's been a big help. There's some other, there's another cool thing he sent over too. That will be coming soon too. So, um, been a big super help in this series. We don't have the box anymore. We don't have the box. Because we sent it back to Steve Higgin. So, <laughs> oh, that box. Yes, that box. Right, yeah. Right. So, we're just going to hear the MPC7 in the MPC guitar. Now, Steve said this. I forget what word he used, but I got the impression it wasn't great. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's like, it's our, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So, and then interesting. I had a battery in the guitar when I pulled it down. Right. Started playing it. The parameter that the knob controls stopped working. Then it just cut out. So I grabbed another. We have like a whole mug full of batteries over there that people send in pedals that we take out. Grabbed one of those. Same kind of thing happened. Got a brand new battery for my wife. Same kind of thing happened. I don't know if it just needs... A lot of juice. A lot of juice <laughs> or what. So we figured we weren't going to mess with batteries anymore. Grabbed the Mission 529i rechargeable battery pack. Plugged in the 9-volt adapter thing. Plugged that into the guitar. We know we have a nice, clean, constant supply. I told Jason he could put it in his back pocket like a wireless unit and plug in a couple modules and... <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, if you're not hip to the 529i from Mission yet, yeah. like this has been, mm -hmm. we use it all the time. Yeah. Do you want to do a little pedal board to take to a jam, do a rehearsal, whatever? Uh, so plug for that and for that because it's just been like a total awesome piece of kit to have around. So if I don't move wrong, hopefully I won't move wrong and pull that off the weekend. But anyway, here we go. Um, I'll play a little bit with the guitar on. No effect. I'll click on the first switch here. We'll engage the MPC-7. We'll let you hear it, and then we'll talk about the parameter. All right. So... Mm -hmm. Trying to see if I saw the doodah man walk across the shelf back there. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, he went, what? No, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. There's a huge volume drop. Yeah. And so a lot of the MPC modules did that. Like when you kicked them in, mm -hmm. there was, I mean, you got to figure when these were built, the year was, you know, everything that was going on. So there's an, some of them have that inherent volume drop. The uh, parameter knob controls the speed of the filter. And so I'll try and play a chord and just move that around real quick so you can hear what that does. Um. <laughs> Thank you. 
I feel like when the uh, effect was exaggerated, it, it brought some more fullness back, uh, the more throbby, so maybe the perception of less thin. Right. Um, yeah, this is kind of thin. It's kind of... And like, there's something weird going on. Like, if you roll the the knob up all the way, it's almost like that goes away. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's supposed to do that. Maybe we'll put a pause right here. And we're back. Wanted to check because what I've, what I've noticed with it is if you roll the knob all the way up to 10, it's almost like the wave goes away. Mm-hmm. And then you start to back it off and then it kicks in and it's pretty fast and then it sl- gets slower as you go back. I was wondering, I wanted to check the copy to see if you roll it all the way up, if that was supposed to make it go away. I didn't want to say something wrong. But no, I think that could just be the way our pod is something. The fact that it's from you know, the 70s. The patina. Right, the patina. Well, since, since we got these out, these we didn't notice the great, uh, give your foot a rest and let the Ottawa do the work. <laughs> <laughs> Copy's good. Oh, that would be great. So, um, before we put this away. Yes. Tommy did send some other things. He sent us the RFO Super Distortion, but I think we already did it. We have an episode on that, uh, but we'll probably check it out anyway, but I'm not sure we'll do a video on it. He sent us another treble bass expander. We, we might do a video on it. Right now, it's not. It seems maybe sadder than the first one he sent, um, unfortunately. And there are people that say, there's people that have commented on that video saying they're good. And he sent us another phase shifter. I think those are the three the Ottawa, the phase shifter, treble bass, and the RFM. Those four he sent. Mm-hmm. I do have the phase shifter in here just because, yeah, that one was that one was kind of sad, sad. But listen, like some of these were really good, right? I mean, what were there eleven? Yeah, some you of, can't hit eleven home runs, at least not in one game. No, but I, I remember I really liked the envelope filter, and then check out the phaser. Here's yeah. the phaser. I'm gonna crank it all the way up. There we go, phaser. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there it is. The uh, MPC-7 mm-hmm. Ottawa that completes. We've now had every module in here. Um, I would I would end with saying some of these modules come and the boxes are really, really heavy. Right. These are full of epoxy. Some of them come and there are epoxy. And some of them come and they're really light because there's no epoxy on the circuit board. Um. You know, I'm not, wouldn't be surprised if there's some capacitors or resistors or something in there that are starting to wear out in some of them. And that's maybe why we're having trouble with, like, the treble base expander. Right. Overall, there's some really, really good ones. And there's some that you probably don't want to spend a couple hundred dollars or asking for. Right. But, Tommy, we're glad that you did and that yeah. you shared them with us. We really appreciate it. So, anything? No. I, it's, well, I say no and then I always say stuff. It's a, it's a, tra- it's a patented trademark of mine. It's been an interesting journey to, to do this, right? There again, eleven of them, and then some others that were uh, homemade uh, mm-hmm. that were that were shared with us, and some were good, some were not our cup of tea. But the concept is really interesting. And again, when you go back to mid seventies technology, and uh, it was a really brilliant idea or a different idea, 
that still exists today in, in some other guitar manufacturers. Um, but it's, it's an interesting, an interesting concept. It was fun. It was different. Mm -hmm. Um, it was part of the many phases of the rabbit hole of the Electro's journey. So it's cool. I mean, as far as those goes, I, I ask you, do all of your Atari cartridges still work? Well, and so what I would say, if you have an MPC guitar, this is the Electro Distortion Circuit built by RFO. He built the Super Distortion. He built the... Organ? Or is that the original? No, no, no. The, the El Mucumbo. No, oh, okay. Yes. Other, yeah. Elmo yes. built the Elmo. Yeah, I was like, you said right? He part. built that one. So he is making new ones, and like I plugged this in tonight just because it's been a while since we had the guitar down, and this electric distortion circuit he built rips, sounds great. So if you have an electric guitar, definitely check out RFO. We have videos in this in the series. You can mm -hmm. see the series, every video in the series at pjandthebeard.com. Um, and with that, you know, thanks for subscribing, uh, clicking the notification bell, like Pat said, anytime you interact with us, it helps us interact with these people to hopefully keep bringing cool content to you and with that. I'm PJ on behalf of the beard reminding, no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. Now what? That's all of them. <laughs>